I am so excited to introduce you to our special guest for this masterclass, Clara. She's the owner of Recourse Global, a firm that helps firms and other companies walk through the transition to remote work, including making sure that they have the right systems in place for effective um, and streamlined communication. Clara herself has worked remotely for eight years from copywriting positions to managing larger remote teams. And before the shift to the remote lifestyle, she spent many, many years as an educator in a public school, um, as well as an educator and project manager for the nonprofit sector. Clara's passion and vision for creating sustainable ecosystems where everyone can live happy and fulfilling lives um, in harmony with their own environments, she advocates that remote work plays a huge role in this. She strives every single day to bring out the best in others, their teams, and creating a virtual community that will be a great example for new generations entering it. Enjoy. Well, thank you so much for being here today, Clara. I really appreciate you taking the time to help us walk through um, navigating the crazy world of remote working and managing teams. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you don't mind, we'll just jump straight on into the questions um, and you can start sharing your wisdom. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> so my first question is, um, it revolves around this whole how working remotely has become so much more common um, lately. I feel like people are searching for it more as well as companies are learning how to, or trying to figure out how to make it work for their employees um, as a perk. And what have you noticed as the biggest obstacle um, for those transitioning to the remote lifestyle? Like how should people be prepared to, to tackle that obstacle? Yeah. I noticed two big obstacles, especially in the minds of business owners who have to decide can, if they can work with uh, their employees remotely or not, yeah. um, whether it's transitioning or starting from scratch. So the two obstacles are trust and the other one is communication. And these also like branch out into different uh, sub obstacles, you know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so the trust obstacle uh, is actually it has three components, three very important things that that have to be there for the entrepreneur, the business owner, to be comfortable with letting their employees be out of sight, you know. And uh, one is that there have to be really really clear systems and workflows that function. That, could, that would function in the office as well. So that you are just translating those systems into remote. The second one is of course discipline. Um, you have to be confident in your employees that they have the discipline to not be you know, diverted to other activities so while they get the job work. done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then what is very close to discipline is accountability. So, but also to understand that everyone's accountable for something and to keep that. So not only that you are working, but that there's someone else who um, needs you to be working, even if you don't see them. Yeah. Um, the, pro the issues with communication are usually technological or um, just people not being used to uh, talking and trying to come to conclusions and uh, doing creative things. When, when they don't see each other's body language, when they at best see each other's faces, but sometimes it's really just calls without, without the faces or it's emails or written communication. And there's a lot of things that you have to be aware of to make this communication actually work and, and, and get results out of meetings and get results out of communicating with each other in written form. Otherwise you are just putting a lot of information back and forth, but there is no result, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So it has to be whole. Uh, there, there should be no missing information, and people shouldn't be excluded from getting information. It should be really effective and to the point. And um, and yeah, and uh, it. So the other thing with communication is creating a team culture that is very difficult if you don't smell and hear and touch each other, right? So yeah. if you can't just share like a wink or, or just a, hey, did you see that or something like that? So 
there has to be ways and there are ways how to overcome this and we will talk about it later yeah um yeah not not lose information that's that's really important yeah absolutely. and sometimes there are teams who are semi remote so there are some people who are remote and some people are, are at the office and this really needs a lot of thought and a lot of structure so it works so those who are not in the office don't feel left out and are not left out it's not even just feeling but maybe they are left out you know so you have to be really conscious do you find that those semi um semi remote situations are they harder to structure than either fully remote or fully in the office uh yeah it has its challenges just because of this inequality between yeah. the relationships of the employees yeah so probably 100 percent of either model is always better but that doesn't mean that the other ones can't work true um so what's the biggest difference that you've noticed between an entrepreneur manning managing themselves remotely versus managing their own remote team as well as themselves mm. so the first thing that comes to mind is actually a, a, a difference in the mindset and the uh, goals of people not everyone wants to be an entrepreneur right not and but they still can and do lead teams yeah. but it's a very different type of of leadership an entrepreneur usually has a lot of wears a lot of hats so they have to do a lot of things. They have to keep uh, other people motivated. They have to give a sense of stability, but also a direction to the team, right? Yeah. The remote team managers usually are very specialized in their area. They come from, um, they, they get this role because they are really good at what they are doing. So they become responsible for everyone else who is on their team and who has to come up with the results that the entrepreneur manager <laughs> wants to see from them so they are also providing stability back up to to their um, boss but it's not in the sense of direction it's in the sense of execution they are the pillars for the entrepreneur so he could do his chore chores <laughs> so he could take care of his um objectives yeah. and know that everything that he envisions or he gives out as a task will be executed to the point by this very specialized per person who needs to learn the skills the soft skills of management as well so they need to have these two two um skill sets basically a lot of moving parts <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah so i think what i've seen is really a difference in the attitude and the specialization yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah. Um, so then what are the top three pieces of advice that you would give to someone who's thinking of expanding their team remotely? Yeah, well, I would say uh, um, <laughs> zero, one of, so before I say the three pieces of advice, yeah. I would say just an overarching one, which is don't fear it. Okay. It's, it's manageable. It needs um, conscious thought before you do it. Yeah. And then just as anything else, but uh, usually if, if a business is started within an office environment, it evolves in that uh, cultural um, yeah, environment or it, it evolves in, in the culture of an office. Yeah. But if you want to switch to remote or start a remote company, so you really need to think about some very um, foundational things. And we talked about communication and trust and uh, discipline. Uh, but I want to highlight one of the things that is basically the um, foundation of the, these. And that before you even start thinking about it, make sure that you have your uh, company identity and your yeah. uh, processes and workflows and systems figured out. Absolutely. You have a base, you have it in yeah. your mind, you know how things work and now you are translating it into different types of tools and environments. Yeah. When you do that and you do transfer and you start working remotely, there's a high chance that you will not only be working with people from your own culture, but that you are going to use this uh, new opportunity of having remote contractors or employees and reach out to some other countries. So it's really, really important to be aware of your own cultural Mm. identity identity okay yeah. 
mm, yeah, so be aware of your own cultural habits. Okay. Because there is a way that we communicate and mm -hmm. some other people communicate differently and they might want the same thing, they just don't express it the same way. Yeah. Or some cultures don't re express certain things that you think, you assume that they would expre express, so you would never ask. Yeah. And, and they are waiting for you to ask and you think that they would just tell you those things, right? So there's so much... Um, again, we come back to communication, yeah. and the, this is really a soft skill. This is a this is a thing that you probably can't learn in three steps, mm -hmm. but you have to be really, really conscious and aware of it because it's a, it can be a deal break, breaker. Yeah, for sure. And the third very important thing that um, someone needs to be aware of if they want to do this remote. Uh, business model is to learn to hire without hire people without having a face-to-face -face meeting with them I think many times when you hire an employee they they are there in front of you you see them you feel their energy you you can see the micro movements in their bodies yeah but if you work remotely you have to develop a skill of being able to screen people through uh, through a camera <laughs> yeah <laughs> and again this is a skill that can be developed if you don't have time for it there are people who already have developed this skill so you can find someone um, and just as just hire them as a consultant to either teach you or or do it instead of you do the hiring process yeah. yeah and then if you do your job later on with these people that someone uh, did so someone hired for you then then you don't have to do it too often because then you have you will be able to build a, a very stable team who is there on the in the long term so it's a good investment you get someone screen them <laughs> and and then take care of your people yeah that's great i love that tip actually i think it's really important and it is hard i think everyone kind of goes through this learning curve when they start to do the online stuff with being able to pull out the personality on the other side of the camera. So especially when you're trying to find people that are a good fit for your team, having the skills to be able to, to make sure that they are a good fit without being there in person. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. It's a yeah. great one. Um, so do you have a favorite software or app that you would recommend for communicating um, between your remote team members? So what I learned throughout the years is that there is no one app that works for everyone. Yeah. That first, again, you have to figure out what you need the app for. So first you have to figure out what you want to do. And then you find an app for that. And maybe you don't find the app at the first try. Um, so I don't want to now go into the typical listing of apps that people use because I think people already have heard of these and there are some popular ones and some less popular ones, some work better, some work worse. But I've seen, I've had the experience of getting a, an app or a system or a software just because it was recommended by someone as a good one, but yeah. it absolutely did not comply with the workflows that we were used to. So now either we have to change the workflows or come to a compromise where something can be done, but then we need another software that would... <laughs> and then all of a sudden you have like 10 different softwares going on. Yeah. yeah. So again, it, there's no magic tool, but there could be a magic tool if you know exactly what magic you want to do. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I totally agree with that, especially with what we're doing with Rebel Office. It's hard because people want to just know the answer right away and know what works for them, but every business is different. So being able to tune in to what your actual needs are and then finding the solution from there instead of being like, oh, it's working for them, like that's what I need too. That's not yeah. always the case. That's not the case. And, the other, and what that could lead into is having five different communication channels. Yeah. Because you tried one, then you have some information there, but it turned out that it's not enough. You, have, you implement another one, then then people get used to talking to each other on a third one. So now you, are, you have information all over the place and there are no rules and now you have to make new rules. And th that takes so much time. And, you know, people are uh, creatures of habit. So if they are already used to one thing, to make them switch to another one just to try and then to a third one just to try again, yeah. it just creates a mess. 
So yeah, first know what you want to do without, so if you can do it on paper or in just the usual tables or documents that you use, then you can transfer it to a tool. But the tool will not create a process for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, are there any investments that you've seen entrepreneurs make um, as they try to develop their remote teams that you would either encourage them to make or discourage them to be like, no, that was a bad investment on, like, have you noticed anything? Um, yeah, I have one yes. for each, actually. I can tell you one for, uh, one as a warning and one as an encouragement. Uh, both are usually, so what I've seen, I mean, I, I, these are not business investments in, in the traditional sense. Usually are, they are always about team building or, or uh, trying to improve communication or save a team from um, dissolving or things like that. And uh, so what I can warn against <laughs> is investing in something that is not obviously the solution to the problem. Either the team doesn't know what the problem is and they don't understand why they are doing a certain exercise or a certain training or whatever, or they know what the problem is and they don't see the connection between that investment or not. And that really makes the people feel, um, they, they can lose a little bit of trust with, with the management because they see a bad decision made. So. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't understand why, why are we investing now even our time and our money into something that leads nowhere. It doesn't mean that it was a bad decision. It doesn't mean that it was a bad investment. It just means that the point of it wasn't communicated. So my warning is not against trainings or against trying to save a team. My warning is against not communicating the reason behind it. Not, not being transparent about this is the problem that we see and we see it and we acknowledge it and we think this is a good solution. Or asking the team before you invest in it, look, we see that there's a problem. What would you suggest as a solution? And maybe they can actually tell you something that will be a better uh, use of money, no? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, what I can encourage for sure, especially for remote teams is to have or to invest and put aside money for at least one or two team building meetings face to face du right. during the year. Yeah, super important, and it should not be wasted uh, without thought. Again, it yeah. should be strategically organized, and there are two reasons to have these meetings. One is to just have to just really build a team and um, create an environment when they where they can spend some time together that is not business related, but yeah that it's um, just really friendly time with your coworkers, it helps a lot later on. The other thing uh, is to do something strategic and creative. While it is, it, it is really truly possible to be creative via video conference, it cannot be compared to face-to-face -to -face creative hours. Yeah. And these, and if you do it strategically and you know what you want to develop, then you can use this investment of flying everyone to the same place to come up with, with a really creative, really new progressive idea that then everyone can just develop at home or wherever they are working. Because to execute, you can probably even do it better at home than in a busy office, no? Yeah. But to come up with a really creative thing where everyone can pitch in and say, oh, yeah, oh, that's a good idea. You need to see people's reactions. You need to see that they are like, you know, holding their breath, like, I want to say something. But if you, if you don't see each other and if you don't see that they, they just, um, I don't know, they, they had their arms crossed and now they uncross them because they are opening up to say something, you will never hear what they had to say because they are yeah. maybe shy. They won't start talking to you so you would be missing some really crucial ideas yeah so you're basically investing in the opportunity to create those impactful decisions and then letting people go and focus on their expertise and working um in the exactly. remote environment and yeah instead of, yeah and instead of using or investing a lot of time of everyone's time and trying to come up with something and develop let's say a product throughout three or four weeks you can do it in three days yeah yeah. All right. Well, um, to finish things off, I just have a final question. 
With your experience working with remote teams, what are the perks of building a remote team? How can they help a business and these entrepreneurs running their online businesses? How can remote teams help them grow? Yeah. So I, there are so many, <laughs> but I try to narrow it down. <laughs> okay. Just a very obvious, very business related, really like how can I save money or, or expand my business with, with this remote setup? The first very obvious thing is you don't need an office. So your overhead costs are cut drastically. Yeah. I read some, I mean, you, it's really difficult to put a number to it because it depends on what office you have been renting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but an article said that on average, it's about 20,000 USD a year, but that's an average. So it can be a, much more for bigger teams or yeah. less for a smaller one. The second one is scalability. So if you don't need to hire people to come to your office and make sure that they, they are there and you have to put them on payroll and pay all the benefits and everything, but you can have some, you can have a core team that is, uh, that gets the benefits and everything. And then you can have these one-off ad hoc contractors. So when you know that you need more people, you, you get more people with of course the agreement that this is just temporary mm -hmm. and yeah you can scale so that's for sure a huge benefit the mm -hmm. third one is very co connected to this which is that uh what i've already mentioned that so you can use the opportunity to have people only on contract basis um but i think this is a topic for a completely different class because um, there are some things that you really need to think about when you do this as well. Um, can, is it okay to, uh, how long can you do that with a person? What, you know, what costs you need to count with if you do do it like that, what not? So there's, there's a lot of factors that go into this as well, but, but you can, and it's, again, your costs are cut with this, um, at least temporarily or on the long term. It depends on the, on, on how you organize it. Yeah, for sure. And then the fourth, which I think is a very interesting and probably liberating benefit from re remote work, is that you can, as a business, enter markets, enter different markets, different countries, dif different um, continents without needing to be there. So you can be based wherever you are, and you see that for whatever your service or product or um, idea is, there is a market somewhere on the other side of the world, <laughs> but now you need to count with, oh my God, now I have to move there and spend a lot of time there and learn the culture and learn the market and enter the market. But if you learn how to screen someone <laughs> um, via video, you can hire someone on the other side of the world. Yeah. And they can be your avatar there. They can yeah. be your hand mm -hmm. in another country who already knows the market, who, who can actually consult you and advise you on how to do this. Okay. Well, thank you so much for speaking and sharing your wisdom. I feel like it's given everyone who's considered even going, working remotely by themselves or bringing on um, and expanding their remote team tons to think about. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. Um, and we look forward, we'll hopefully have you back again. Um, and where can people find you if they want to learn more about um, expanding the remote team? Thank you very much for your uh, idea to do this masterclass. And it was a pleasure to share my experience and think about your questions, because I think they were really, really good questions. And they touched upon topics that an entrepreneur would, would ask if they started considering like this or, or even if they, had, yeah, if they hadn't thought about it before, then now they could actually give it a thought. Yeah. Um, you can find me via uh, our website. Um, my company is Recourse Global and that's our website, recourse.global. And you can find out more about our services. We actually do this. We help entrepreneurs transition to remote uh, setups and uh, help them with HR, with trainings, with workshops, with onboarding and anything that, that they need. Uh, of course, customized to their specific setup yeah. because everyone's different. So yeah. I'll be looking forward to 
anyone's questions and and uh, yeah perfect thank you so much thank you very much